Hey lads, and this isn't going to be a long video. Uh, I've got the enviable task of painting the meat and potatoes of my army, the Urukai warriors. Uh, here's one, one of the guys. Um, I'm not trying to improve with this video. I'm trying to find ways to find efficiencies. I'm trying to find ways to cut corners and still get a decent product out. I'm halfway through these lads. They are tedious, and as much as I love Lord of the Rings, these these models, these Orakai Warriors, they need a new sculpt. The detail meshes into each part, and it, they're just not a pleasure to paint. It, it really does feel like tedium with it. I know these models are 20 years old now, uh, but I, I really think we need a new sculpt for them. I know we're not going to get one, unfortunately, because I know we just got the new tree beard out and Games Workshop are going for more centerpiece models. But you never know, with the second age coming out soon, hopefully we might get one then. As before, all the paints that I use are, will be in the video description down below. If you give us a like on the video, it gives me a nice warm fuzzy feeling inside, so thank you very much for that one. Now then, I've got my brew and it's been a while since I painted because of Chinese New Year, so I need to give my paints a good old shake. So let's uh, get into it. First, I'm going to get my base coat down. I'm using Shadow Flesh on the skin. It looks like I've added a little bit too much water to my wet palette. Whoops. I am being careful and just applying a nice, thin, even coat to only the skin sections. Trying not to get it on any other parts of the model. With it being thin, I am applying two coats. And this is what it should look like when it's dry. I'm using a mixture of Abaddon Black and Bolt Gun Metal for the metal. Like previously, I'm doing two thin coats and making sure I am careful. With the leather, I'm going to do it in two parts. I want the main pieces of leather and the hair darker, so I'm using Wild Wood Contrast Paint here, remembering to give them all nice two coats, as the man himself says. For the bands of leather, I want them lighter to give the model some contrast. For this, I'm using English Uniform. Next, washers. I forgot to hit the record button on this part. Whoops. Now I go over the leather with Serin Sepia, making sure it doesn't pull up in any places. I don't want to create a coffee stainer effect. I use wild wood and flesh terrors on the skin, like in the last video. If you haven't checked that out, please give it a watch. For the metal, mix equal parts Vallejo Rust with Black Templar Contrast Paint and Medium to get a nice consistency and apply it evenly over the model. If you want more of a rust effect, you can add more rust to the mixture. Now let it dry and give it a second coat if you want. This is what you should get. I wanted a more subtle effect rather than anything else, as you can see here. That's finished our base coats, which means I can now move on to defining areas. I'm going to start on the skin. For a fuller tutorial, please again watch the last video. I have some Bugsman Glow and Mornfang Brown on my palette. I use Mornfang Brown on the highest parts of the legs to give it a darker and natural tone. And I make sure I highlight all the muscle groups with a mixture of Shadow Flesh and Bugsman's Glow. Then you want to keep going back over what you painted. Using a lighter mixture each time to make smaller highlights until you're left with a point.
my last highlight is Cadian Flesh Tone, but this is only used on the highest edges. Some of my layers are quite stark, which doesn't look realistic. I use my contrast paints and make them into a glaze. The reason behind this is to dull down these layers and give them all the same colouring. You can do as many glazes as you want until you're happy with the end result, though you need to make sure you let each layer dry before you add a next one. The leather is the same principle. Use dried bark to define the shadows, making sure if you have any dark areas from the contrast paints that they are brightened up. Then apply Gawthorn Brown for a more of a middle highlight and use Bane Blade Brown to pick out the sharpest edges. Just being careful when you apply this. You may find this too bright and you might want to dull down the leather. So use Agrat's Earthshade. It really is the master shade. As you can see, this is what the end product of these stages should be. For the metal, just use bold gun metal to highlight all the edges and any surfaces that face the light and use it to break up the darker st steel colour. Just taking your time and when you can, use the edge of your brush. It's just a slow laborious process but it really does make a world of difference. Once the steel is finished, it's time for the eyes and teeth. I'm using my new triple zero brush for this, but it still really is hard to achieve a nice effect. Later, you can use some flesh terrors in the mouth to give the teeth a bit of a red tint. This is extra detail and you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I wouldn't recommend doing this for all your miniatures as it takes a lot of time. Although on several miniatures it creates a nice effect. That's the white hand of Saruman. Like before, make sure you have reference material on hand and use Wraithbone to sketch it on. Once dry, use a mixture of Wraithbone and White Scar to highlight it. Remember, Urukai aren't the pristine knights like what you would expect from Minas Tirith. So make sure to add scratches to the paint using bulk on metal. Then base him like the rest of your army and voila, all finished. Hope you guys liked it. Please, if you have any comments, please feel free to drop me a message below. Now only 20-ish of these lads left. So I might not see you in the next one. Uh, thanks for watching and ta guys. Bye.